As a first step, let's set up Illustrator's workspace to show just the essentials by cruising right up here to the workspace options and selecting essentials. This will put the tools panel on the left side and the ever so useful properties panel on the right. Okay, let's begin your ascent of Mount Vector. Starting at level one, where we learn about navigation in Illustrator, just hold down the spacebar to access the hand tool and drag your mouse to move up, down, left, or right. Once you've got the hang of it, pan on up to level two. There are a ton of ways to zoom in Illustrator, but since you just learned how to use the spacebar to get the hand tool, it might be easiest to use spacebar plus command to zoom in and out. Do note that you do need to press spacebar then command because command then spacebar brings up the spotlight search on a Mac. All right, move right over this mysterious red dot and hold down the spacebar and command and then drag to the right to zoom on in. And behold, one of the big secrets of vector graphics revealed. That is, vector graphics never get pixelated. Okay, to zoom back out, try out the spacebar and command combo again, but this time drag to the left to zoom out. Great. Now, if getting the whole document to center nicely is a bit tricky, try out one more keyboard shortcut, Command zero to fit the document perfectly on your screen. Okay, when you're ready, zoom on in to level three. Level three introduces the concept of selecting. Press V to get the black arrow and click on the dragon's tail. Notice there's now a blue line running down the middle. This line is a vector path. And once you've selected a vector path, you can do pretty much anything to it. For starters, let's change the stroke weight and its color. Over here in the properties panel, you see a value of 22. This is the stroke's weight. If you click the arrow or select from the dropdown list, or probably easiest of all, scroll up and down in this area, you'll see the tail get wider or thinner. As for color, if you move just to the left over this gold square, that is the stroke color. Click on this square and you'll see the basic RGB color palette that you can use to change the color of the tail. All right, now that you understand about stroke, pan on up to level four to learn about the fill. Okay, every vector path has both a stroke and a fill. Stroke is pretty intuitive because it's how we draw, but fill can be a little tricky at first. Just imagine that you can fill in a shape with any color or gradient or pattern you want, and that is the fill. And if you don't want to fill, that's an option too. Just select the path and press the forward slash tool to choose no fill. Notice how the fill in the properties panel now has a red diagonal line. This red diagonal line is Adobe speak for none. So in this case, it means no fill. All right, now that you understand stroke and fill, let's slide on up to level five and do some transforming. All right, so the black arrow not only selects paths that you want to change, it is your one-stop shop for transforming. Let's prove it by breaking these boards. First, select the hand and then click one of the corners of this bounding box. And notice that by default, the object will scale or transform freely and things can get Pretty weird. So to lock proportions, be sure to hold down shift or shift and option to lock and scale from the center so that the shape stays proportional. Once you feel like the hand is big enough, use the black arrow to move it by simply dragging down. All right, now click on the board and notice it's actually two objects. To rotate these objects, just select one and move just outside the corner of the bounding box, and you'll see a rotate icon. Notice that if you hold down shift while you're rotating, it will snap to 45 degree increments. All right, the black arrow has one more secret. Hold down shift and click both boards. And then if you hold down option and drag, notice that the black arrow is also a copying tool but some transformations require real precision. Pan on over to level six and let's try out some transform options in the properties panel. 
Okay, when you need to move, scale, or rotate in some exact way, the Properties panel allows you to type in exact values and even do basic math functions to be very precise. The Properties panel also offers the easiest way to reflect objects. So click this icon to flip the ninja the other way. Whew. That was close. And when you're ready, pan on up to level seven. Embrace yourself for the ferocious bunny. Level seven will teach you about the white arrow, but before we bust out that tool, let's zoom way in on the bunny's face using spacebar command. And now press the A key to get the white arrow. First, use the white arrow to click the corners of her nose and notice that the path now has three tiny squares on each corner. These squares are anchor points, corner anchor points to be exact. And if you click one, notice that it turns blue to show that it's selected. And when it's selected, you can drag them around all day long and change the shape. All right, now select the bunny's mouth and notice that these anchor points are a bit different because they have lines that stick out with a white circle attached. These are curve anchor points which have handles that allow you to change not only the position, but the curve of the point as well. All right, try dragging both the points and the handles around to see how you can change the bunny's mood. Very nice. If you got this far, it looks like you are all set and have rightly earned your white belt. So use the space bar to pan on up to the design dojo and follow the instructions on the door to reveal the